Hi friends, you welcome back again to Navina's Kitchen. If today is your first time of watching my video, thank you so much guys for clicking and watching. I'm a beautiful YouTube family. Thank you so much for always coming back to check on my videos, okay? So in today's video, I'm happy to share with you how to process the African Nigeria cassava into Gary. So if you want to know about the process, just sit back as I'll be right back shortly. all right friends so you're welcome back again so here with me is a few cassava which i'm going to turn into gari for this video okay so now i'm going to use my knife to just cut out the two edges which is the stem okay because that part there is not uh cassava right there so i'm using my knife to give it a mark and then peel off the skin yes so normally in africa we don't process the cassava with the skin together we just use a knife or cutlass to peel off the skin just like this so yes, I'm going to repeat the same process with everything, peeling off everything. So after peeling off, next is to wash it. So talking about the shaft, in Africa, we give the shaft or the skin of the fresh cassava to animals like goats to eat, okay? So yeah, that is it, guys. So next here, I don't have goats, okay? So I'm just going to just dispose of the skin just like that, okay? Next step is to wash the peeled cassava, okay? So if you notice, I always say peat cassava or fresh cassava. That is because after processing, that is why you call it gari, okay? So this white tuber you're seeing is called cassava. After frying it, you call it gari, okay? Yes. So yes, next step is to cut my cassava into smaller parts because I'm not taking this to the mill or to the machine to grind it. Where in Africa, we always take the fresh tuba or the washed tuba like you see to the machine where we always grind it into a smooth mash paste, okay? So because I don't have a machine to grind it right here in my city or in the country where I live, so I'm using my simple method which is using my blender to blend it, okay? So right guys, so here after uh, chopping it, I'm scooping it into my bowl right there and then continue with the rest tuba, cutting them into smaller parts, okay? all right so yes again after cutting everything i'm using my blender to blend this into a very smooth paste like i said before and to do this i'm going to add enough water into the the blender and the cassava together that way it doesn't affect the blades of my blender so next is to blend it into a very very smooth paste guys so i'm going to use this cassava and processing to make two things which is to make the data starch which is the original starch okay yeah which is different from the potato starch which we always get right here so i'm going to continue blending it until everything is finished guys all right right here you can see the blended cassava is already fermenting okay so if you want to make that sour type of ijebugari you can go ahead and cover this for the next two to three days for it to ferment. That way you have your sour garis. That also goes with the fufu. So if you want to make fufu out of this, also cover it and let this sit for two to three days. That way it's going to ferment and start to stink. Okay. Then you just sieve it and then you have your fresh fufu. So I'm not going to make fufu or I'm not going to make the ijabu gari. I'm just going to make yellow gari, a starch and a white gari out of this. Okay. So to sieve it, I'm going to use my muesli bag, okay? So first thing I do is to go ahead and add enough of water into the blended cassava right there, okay? This is where you get the fresh cassava starch from. So for those of you that like to order fresh cassava from Delta or Edo State, so this is how they get their fresh cassava starch, how they process it. This is exactly the way they do it, okay? I know most of you want to know how I learned this and how to process this cassava into gari, okay? So guys, most of us in Africa or in Nigeria precisely, we all had a village where we came from, okay? So I grew up with my parents like before moving to the city, okay? So I normally go with them to the farm, plant the cassava and uproot or harvest it and taking it to the meat and all that. So that is where I learned how to do this. So yes, next step, I'm going to use my cup to just cup uh, from the liquid into my muslin bag and I use my finger to press it out from the bag just to get the liquid starch out of it, okay? So this is very simple and this is the best starch ever. So if you want to order a data starch, so this is the kind of starch you are going to get, okay, from data state because cassava starch is the best starch ever and not the kind of potato starch we always buy here in Europe, okay? So yes, I don't have a pressing machine to press out the liquid from my cassava. 
that is the main reason i'm using a muesli bag to do my pressing all right so originally from africa so after grinding it using the meal you're not going to find something that liquid like just like this okay yeah because most people they don't like to make starch out of their cassava because they they think if you make a starch out of it at the end your uh, bar is not going to be sticky okay so what we do is just get uh, a little uh, like one bowl of cassava fresh grinded cassava out of the the quantity we have and then make starch out of it okay and then add everything together to process our gary that is it guys so yes guys just keep watching as i'll be right back shortly so here is the cassava after pressing out all the starch away from it yes so yes, before I go straight into the frying process, I'm going to go ahead again to sever the starch again one more time because yeah, I had to do this because sometimes you still find some some gary inside the starch, okay? Because it's not really, really, really clean, okay? Yeah, the fresh cassava is still inside. So I'm using my spoon once again to stir everything together again and then just pass it through the muesli bag one more time, okay? That way you have the perfect and smooth cassava starch without any lumps or cassava inside of it okay so yes guys i'm just going to continue this process until i am done sieving out all the liquid starch through the muesli bag All right, friends, so here after sieving now the second uh, liquid from the bag, so I'm just going to open the bag to show you guys the, yeah, you can see I still have some fresh cassava right there, okay? So this is the reason you have to sieve it twice because you don't want cassava inside your style. So here is it, using my hand to just like, yeah, spread the cassava just like that. So at this point, I'm going to just pour this fresh cassava into my fishnet bag, okay? yes but in, in africa if you want to make the red gary you can just go ahead and then add in oil just like this but i don't want to add oil at this point because i don't want the oil to stain my fish net bag so in the morning of it i'm going to do the oiling part so i'm going to just let this uh tie the bag and let it sit lay it over my plastic just like this for the air to circulate okay so in Africa, normally you should leave this for the whole night, okay? That way the chemical acids from the fresh cassava can decrease. All right, guys, so it's morning already. So the next day, here is my starch. Everything has really, really settled down. So I'm just going to just um, drain out the water from the bowl, okay? Because my starch is, is at the bottom. Don't forget, I use just a few cassava tubers to do this process. That way, my cassava starch I'm getting is not a lot, okay? So if you want to get more fresh cassava starch from this, make sure to use a lot of cassava tuber. That way, you have a lot of fresh, fresh data starch made from cassava, okay? So yeah, you can see the cassava starch. Everything is okay. You can see how it is. This is the best cassava starch ever guys so yes guys this my cassava starch was not much okay so i'll be using this to mix my potato starch the one we buy here the powdered one okay so to make this not to go bad so i'm going to just use my spoon to scoop it into my storage bag right there and then place it inside my freezer okay so whenever i want to use it i can then get it out and then use it Right, so now back to the gary so yes it's time for me to just uh pour the gary into my bowl it's already the next day like i said before yes so the chemical acid in the fresh cassava has already reduced so i'm going to use my hand to just like uh, break the lumps from the fresh cassava just like this and then separate it into two bowls because i'm going to make um the red gary and the white gary so here is the palm oil i'm using so guys this palm oil i'm using is not the good type so in africa if you're using the native palm oil just a little bit like this can go a long long way okay so yes after missing it you can see it wasn't enough so i went ahead to add more palm oil into it and then use my hand to mix everything together yes so yes after mixing it together the uh, fresh cassava was kind of dry yes but nevertheless it's still okay so now i'm going to use my sieve to 
feta rate okay so we call this feta in africa so yeah we have a special feta we use in doing this okay so i'm just using my normal feta in the kitchen to feta it so i also went ahead to feta the the red one so here is the shaft that is the stem and the cassava so i'm going to throw that off and then go to the next step which is to fry my gary guys now it's time to fry the gary so to start with i'm going to show you three steps to fry the gary so here comes the do's and don'ts of frying the gary okay so the first step is the high heat method okay so yes this method is not uh, recommended so if you're new to frying gary make sure not to use the high heat method because your gary is going to turn out to have a lot of lumps like this but don't worry i'm going to show you how you convert it into normal rig gary okay so next step is the low heat gary yes so if you also you're using the low heat to fry the gary the gary is not going to be lumpy like the first one rather it's going to be powdered okay it's just going to be like very very smooth and it's not going to be a lot yes don't worry i'm still going to show you how to convert it into gary okay yes guys yes next is to fry the third method which is the medium heat so yes i'm using the red gary or the yellow gary to do this so this is the best way to fry your gary you pour the gary into the the oven because in africa we use the oven the big metal oven to fry the gary so yes i'm just using my fry pan like i said before so i'm stirring this after stirring i'm going to let this sit for a few minutes like two to three minutes to rise and then come back again and continue stirring okay so yes after stirring it a few bit okay i'm going to let it sit again and then let it rest for it to bake properly okay so if you want to make gary for selling this is the best method to go about it okay don't just keep stirring and stirring and stirring always take a break okay and let the cassava to bake just like this so you can see the color is beginning to change into a very a uh, beautiful yellow color okay so i'm just going to just stir it a little bit and then let it rest again and then continue frying so yes guys you can see after um frying for a while the cassava color is very very beautiful so i'm just going to just let this uh dry okay so after drying it's going to be really really crispy so when you feel it in your fingers it's really really crispy so this is the really best way to fry gary in case you want to sell it this is the best way to go about it okay so i'll be pouring this into my tray for it to cool down all right family so after frying the gary you can see the high heat method which is so lumpy and the low heat method which turns out to be powdered yes and then the medium heat which is perfect don't mind the color yeah that is just the oil but the medium heat is the perfect way to fry your gary okay so yes if you want to fry your gari just make sure to always use the medium heat that way you don't have a lumpy or the powdered gari okay so next step is to use my blender to blend the lumpy gari into normal gari once again so i'm going to blend this into a medium smooth texture okay so in africa even when you use the medium uh, heat method you still find some lumps on the gari so normally we just take it to the grinder machine once again to grind it into smoother paste just like this so after blending it i'm pouring it back into my bowl right there and then i'm just going to just mix the powdered gary and the lumpy blended gary together and then store it in a very airtight container for it to remain crispy okay so that is it guys if you like this video if you like my tutorial if you want to see more from my video and you want to stay updated with my channel don't forget to subscribe to my channel like this video and share with your friends and family that way they can know how to make the cassava flakes okay thank you once again and i'll see you on my next one thanks for watching and goodbye bye